um, in the next few lectures I want to discuss the notion of linear functionals, duals, double dual and the transpose okay maybe about uh, 3 or 4 lectures. So let me write down the topics linear functionals, dual spaces, the concept of a dual space, the double dual, and the notion of the transpose of a linear transformation. So let me start with the linear functionals. A linear functional is uh, uh, a special case of a linear transformation when the codomain space is the underlying field. Okay. So definition of a linear functional. A linear map uh, F from V to R where V is a real vector space is called a linear function. It's called a linear functional. So what is important is the word functional linearity we have encountered before throughout the course we will encounter this notion of linearity we will in particular look at what are called linear functionals. So a linear functional is a linear map from V to the underlying field in most of the cases for us the underlying field will be R. So this is a real linear functional okay let us look at some examples. Okay, by the way what does it mean linear functional f uh, means we always use t t from v to w for a functional I will use the word f the first letter of functional. So wh what is the meaning of this this means f of uh, alpha x plus y is alpha f x plus y where uh, x y come from v and alpha comes from R only to emphasize what a linear functional is f of 1. What you must remember is that on the right I have uh, addition of real numbers okay this is addition of real numbers <coughs> the addition on the left is happening in V okay let us look at examples the first example is I can take any I can take any fn and uh, define a functional over f where f is a field real complex etc but again I look at uh, a specific uh, case I'll define f from rn to r as follows f from rn to r any vector must be mapped to a real number I will define that as f of x equals a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus etc plus an xn where I am given the numbers a1 a2 etc an x is an rn I am given the numbers a1 a2 etc an. this is obviously a linear function that can be verified immediately in fact this is of the form fx equals ax where a is just the row vector row vector consisting of the elements a1 a2 etc an so row vector into the column vector x1 etc xn this is a functional this is a linear functional now what is important is to see that uh, any linear functional on rn can be given by this representation so we that gives a complete understanding of linear functionals over rn in fact over any fn 
so let, let me prove that quickly this is a linear functional all right but if you take any other linear functional that must also be of this form then we have completely understood what linear functionals over rn are okay so let me prove that quickly in fact any linear functional on rn is of the form above let me prove that quickly now in order to prove this let me make uh, the following observation observe that uh, f of uh, ej if ej is the j standard uh, basis vector then f of ej equals aj is that uh, clear this is my f f of ej see this x is in rn what is f of ej f of ej must be the, the vector uh, ej is a vector whose jth coordinate is 1 all other entries are 0 so it is only aj on the right so f of ej equal to aj let us make use of this so what is it that i need to prove given uh, given f okay let me say given g given g a linear functional on rn i am given a linear function on rn i want to show that g has this representation i want to show that g has a representation so i'll just make use of this that is given g a linear function on rn i have uh, g of uh, ej to be some number g of ej is some real number i will call that uh, alpha j so i will call the number alpha j as g of ej this is a real number i know okay then i want to show that g of x is of this form i want to show that g of x is of this form this time it will be alpha 1 x 1 etc alpha n x n that is the claim so let us consider okay what is the claim claim is g of x equals uh, alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 etc alpha n x n okay that is easy to see let us do that uh, quickly uh, proof of this g of x x is in rn i will use the standard basis g of summation okay let us say um, x can be written as uh, x1 e1 plus x2 e2 plus etc plus xn en this is a unique representation of any vector x in rn in terms of the standard basis vectors e1 e2 etc en g is linear so this is x1 g of e1 plus x2 g of e2 etc plus xn g of en now i'll uh, take these numbers and replace uh, g ej by these numbers so this is alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus etc plus alpha n x so i have uh, proved what i wanted g of x for me is alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 etc alpha n xn so g of x has this form okay so linear functionals on uh, fn are completely determined i know how they look like okay let's look at other examples this is my first example let me look at uh, other examples one of the important examples of a linear functional is the so called uh, trace functional let me define f from uh, r n cross n to r f of a equals trace of a f of a equals trace of a what is the trace of a square matrix it is the sum of the diagonal entries so this is uh, equals sum of 
the diagonals of A. We'll usually denote the entries of A by A i j, and so this is equal to A one one plus A two two etc. plus A n n summation i equals one to n A i i. That is the uh, trace functional. It's easy to see that uh, the trace functional is a linear functional on uh, R n cross n. Okay. Second example. Third example. Let's look at. Uh, for the third example, we have. Uh, so third example is uh, a special case of what we call as the evaluation map. Let's say I have the space of all functions, v equals uh, the space of uh, all. Uh, Functions over R. Space of all functions over R. Functions of a single variable. That's what it means. Functions over R. I'll define uh, f Okay. Let me use some other uh, notation this time. Define L from V to R by L T of P. L T of P equals uh, P of T. This P belongs to V. This is called the evaluation functional. I take a f I, I take a fixed t, and then define now. And define l t like this. T is a real variable. See, p is a function, so t is a real variable. P belongs to v. V is the space of all functions over R. So, t is a real variable. I fix t. Let us say t equal to zero, and then I define l zero as uh, L zero of p is p at zero, the value of p at zero. This is called uh, the evaluation map. You can easily show that this is a linear functional. L t is a linear functional. For uh, each t, see this evaluation functional will uh, be discussed once again uh, when I. Uh, Give an example of a dual basis. That's the reason why I've wanted to include this example also. Then uh, let me give you one more example. The last, but not uh, certainly the least, linear functional is uh, the following. Uh, for me, v this time will be c zero one. Let us say c zero one this time is the space of all real valued continuous functions over the interval zero one. C zero one is the space of all real valued continuous functions over the interval zero one. I define uh, f uh, from uh, v to R by f of uh, let us uh, let us say a function p. That will be integral zero to one p of t dt. Integral zero to one p of t dt. Remember that p is a continuous function, so this is a Riemann integral. This exists. F of p is integral zero to one p of t dt. This exists, and so this is a this is a number. It's a definite integral. So this is a number. You can easily verify from the properties of uh, Riemann integrals. This is a this is a linear uh, linear map. So this is a linear function. Okay. F is a linear function.
on the space of continuous uh, real valued functions okay okay now let us look at uh, the collection of all linear functionals let us look at the collection of all linear functions let me use a notation v star let v star equals the set of all uh, linear functionals on v set of all linear functionals on v now remember that if v and w are vector spaces then the set of all linear transformations t from v into w set of all linear transformations forms a vector space and we have also determined the dimension of the subspace when v and w are finite dimensional okay so the set of all linear functionals is a vector space because it is a particular case of a linear transformation the codomain space is the uh, uh, underlying field so the set of all linear functionals is a vector space so v star is a vector space and what is the dimension of v star if uh, v has dimension n v star is a real vector space vector space over the same underlying field if dimension of uh, of v equals n then uh, what is the dimension of v star dimension of the vector space uh, l v w is m times n where m is a dimension of v okay n is a dimension of v m is a dimension of w what is the dimension of r over r 1 any field over itself is one dimensional so the dimension of v star is n same as dimension of v okay so we have uh, a certain information on v star v star has the same dimension as v for finite dimensional spaces okay for finite dimensional spaces v star has the same dimension as v the question is can i write down a basis for v star can i write down a basis for v star in such a way that uh, this in some sense corresponds to a basis for v that i start with that's the question okay can i write down a basis for v star in such a way that uh, there is some natural correspondence between the basis for v star that i write down and the basis for v that i start with but before that uh, let me tell you this v star is called the dual space this v star is called uh, the dual vector space of v it is a vector space that is dual to v dual vector space of v set of all linear functionals the space of all linear functionals okay so this is the question that uh, we would like to address the answer is yes given a basis of v there is a natural basis that one could associate uh, with uh, v star that uh, basis will be called the dual basis okay that was one of the topics that i had written down so how to determine uh, what is a dual basis how to determine the dual basis so we would uh, like to discuss the notion of a dual basis the notion of uh, a basis dual to a basis of v a basis of v star dual to a basis of v okay we have in fact the following uh, theorem that will define the dual basis let uh, v be finite dimensional and uh, i will write down a basis of v explicitly u1 u2 etc un this is uh, let this be an ordered basis ordered basis of v then there exists uh, 
<coughs> a basis I will call this basis B star script B star and uh, I will uh, call the elements of B star as F1, F2 etc. F will stand for uh, linear functionals F1, F2 etc. Fn see what I know for sure is that the number of elements in B star must be the same as the number of elements of B because uh, if V is finite dimensional because we know that dimension of V star is equal to dimension of V. Then there exists a basis B star this has certain properties well the most important property that the most important property that we are interested in is the, is the following then there exists a basis B star of V star such that f i of uh, u j is equal to delta i j this basis f 1 etc f n is related to the basis u 1 u 2 etc u n by means of these equations remember these are n square equations these are n square equations delta i j is a chronic delta it takes n square values i and j vary from 1 to n. So these are n square equations. We also have uh, further properties you take any other uh, linear functional any linear functional on V that is F belongs to V star then I can write down uh, explicitly F of X in terms of uh, these uh, basis vectors F1, F2 etc. See this F must suppose that we have proved that this is a basis of uh, V star then any f and v star is a linear combination of these uh, these vectors these functionals so any f can be written as uh, something like alpha 1 f1 plus alpha 2 f2 etc plus alpha n fn okay in the case when we have a dual basis the numbers alpha 1 alpha 2 etc can also be written down immediately fx is nothing but uh, f of uh, u1 x1 plus f of u2 x2 plus etc plus f of uh, un xn okay this is the formula for f any x can in turn be written in terms of these functionals any x and v can in turn be written in terms of these functionals as follows let me just okay I want this representation x equals f i x again come back and uh, look at this x x is in v v has this as a basis and so v is so x is a linear combination of these vectors what are the coefficients what are the coefficients the coefficients are f of u1 uh, u1 plus f of u2 u2 so I need to just check this one see then x can be written as uh, 
I want to write uh, f1 of uh, x. So, yeah, what I want is this f1 of x. Uh, see, these numbers depend on x f1 x u1 plus uh, f2 x u2, etc. f n x. This is the explicit representation of any vector x in terms of the dual basis vectors. So, this is what I wanted to say. Any x is a linear combination of u1, u2, etc., un. In the case of uh, dual basis, once you know the dual basis, you can give the coefficients of x, you can give the uh, uh, coefficients here u1, u2, etc., un explicitly in terms of uh, the dual basis vectors f1, etc., fn. Okay. So, we will prove all these representations. This is a representation for any functional on V, any vector x and V can be written in this manner. Foremost is uh, that uh, f and u, f i's and u j's are related by means of the, these uh, n square equations. Okay, so let's prove this. Yes, sir. Thing is not clear. Any x is a linear combination of u n etc. U n. The question is, what are the coefficients? We are claiming that the coefficients can be given in terms of the dual basis vectors, dual basis functionals. Okay, let us prove this uh, now. Okay, let us start with uh, u1, u2, etc., un. This is a basis of V and the first step I will take these n numbers 1, 0, 0, 0, etc., 0. See, this consists of n elements. Okay. The first entry is 1, all the other entries are 0. n minus 1 zeros, 1, 1. Okay. This is a set of vectors in the vector space R. This is a set of, this is a basis for the vector space V. So these are basis vectors for V. This is any set of vectors in the codomain uh, vector space. I know that there is a unique linear transformation that takes uh, u1 to 1, u2 to 0, etc., un to 0. This result we have seen. Given uh, u1, u2, etc., un, a linear transformation is defined, uh, determined. Uh, uh, completely by its action on a basis and I know that given a set of vectors u1, u2, etc., un basis vectors, w1, etc., wn, absolutely no conditions on these vectors, w1, etc., wn in w, absolutely no conditions. There is a unique linear transformation that takes uj to wj. Okay. So for this, consider this, there exists a functional, linear function, I want to emphasize there exists a unique linear function in fact. So let me write it again. There exists, there exists a unique linear functional unique is important. I have not stated that in the theorem but this is a unique basis. This basis is unique given the basis u1, u2, etc., un. There exists a unique linear functional. I'll uh, linear function. I'll call it f to begin with. Unique linear functional f such that such that f of u one is zero, and all other vectors are mapped to zero. Yes, there exists a unique linear functional f such that f u1 is 1, all the other uh, vectors are mapped to 0. I can do this for, uh, so what I do next is take this basis and then take the numbers 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. I can keep doing this up to n steps. Now for each step I have uh, a unique linear functional. So what I will do is now index these by f1, f2, etc. Okay. So I will say that there is a unique linear functional f1 
such that f1 u1 is 1, f1 u2, f1 u3, etc., f1 un is 0. In general, I have there exists unique linear functionals f1, f2, etc., fn with the property that uh, f1 of okay fi of uj equals delta ij which is the first part of the theorem that is f1 of u1 is 1 f1 of all other vectors is 0 f2 of u1 f2 of u2 is 1 f2 of all other vectors is 0 etc so unless i is equal to j i won't get 1 when i is not equal to j all of them are 0 when i is not equal to j all of them are 0 i is equal to j i get 1 i equal to j corresponds to f1 u1 equal to 1 f2 u2 equal to 1 etc fn un equals 1 so this proves the existence in fact the unique existence of unique uh, set of linear functionals that satisfy these n square equations okay that's the first part we need to verify the other two representations okay let uh, f belong to v star then uh, I have just now proved that by the way uh, what about uh, what about linear independence of these uh, functionals I have not proved I have simply said uh, these uh, functionals satisfy those n square equations why is it a basis why is it a basis by the way are these are these functionals distinct are these functionals in the first place different they are different because uh, f1 takes a value 1 for u1 f2 takes a value 0 for u1 etc so by definition these are different that is there is at least one uh, vector for which uh, the values that f1 f2 etc fn take are different so these are uh, these are distinct to begin with what about linear independence of them suppose I prove linear independence then it follows that they must uh, form a basis because uh, dimension of v star is n linear independence of these uh, functionals that is also easy to see maybe I will leave that as an exercise okay linear independence of these functionals I am going to leave it as an exercise simple straightforward so this forms a basis v star is a basis which is related to the basis b that we started with by means of these n square equations okay we also need to show that uh, the other representations hold representation for f and uh, representation for any vector x okay so this f is in v star f is a linear functional we know that f can be written as a linear combination of the dual basis vectors i have not yet defined dual basis vectors f is equal to uh, let us say something like gamma 1 f1 plus gamma 2 f2 etc gamma n fn this is because f1 etc fn uh, these uh, functionals form a basis for v star okay what is uh, f of uh, uj f of uj is gamma j isn't it f of uj is gamma j it is gamma 1 f of f1 of uj plus gamma 2 f2 of uj etc gamma j fj of uj plus etc plus gamma n fn of uj so that is uh, gamma j fj of uj all other terms are 0 that is just gamma j so do I have the representation then of this fx equals uh, <coughs> look at fx f of x equals f of Uh, 
this this representation is uh, rather incomplete so i've got to go back uh, what do i mean by this uh, what i mean by this is that uh, see uh, when i write down this i must know what x1 x2 etc xn are what is implicit is that x1 x2 etc xn are the coefficients of uh, x in terms of uh, when i write x in terms of u1 u2 etc un i mean that the coefficients of x will be x1 x2 etc xn okay in other words fx i'll write it as f of x1 u1 plus uh, x2 u2 plus etc xn un that is i am assuming that uh, the representation of x in terms of the basis vectors go with goes with these coefficients x1 x2 etc xn okay so now this is uh, x1 f of u1 etc xn f of un f of u1 is uh, gamma 1 i think i have what i wanted right away no that's there's no do i have what i wanted right away yes what was the need for this yeah there is no need for this this comes straight away okay the representation of f the action of f on any vector x this is the representation that's what i have written down there okay uh, this maybe i'll use uh, in the next part is it clear this is the representation that is if i want to know the action of f f is any linear functional i want to know the action of f on x then it is enough if i know the action of uh, f on the basis vectors what i must uh, know is the action yeah what i what i must know of course is what is the representation of x in terms of u1 u2 etc un what are those coefficients okay Le uh, the last one x has this representation i'll go back and uh, look at this representation finally x is uh, my Uh, x1 u1 etc xn un so that uh, f of x uh, f is linear f of x is uh, x1 f of u1 plus x2 f of u2 etc i have determined uh, is that okay what i really want is f1 of x f1 of x is x1 f1 u1 etc xn f1 un now here uh, f1 u1 is 1 so this is x1 what is f2 of x f2 of x is u2 sorry f2 of x is x2 etc fn of x is xn i go back and substitute i get that representation okay so i go back to this equation i go back to this equation x equals x1 u1 plus x2 u2 etc xn un x1 for me i have just now determined is f1 x u1 plus x2 is f2 x u2 etc xn fn sorry just f n x f1 x u1 plus f2 x u2 etc plus fn x u this is a representation uh, of uh, any vector x in terms of uh, the dual basis vectors dual basis functionals that is what i do is uh, given a basis i determine the dual basis and then compute these numbers f1x f2x etc fnx i know x then those are the coefficients corresponding to the representation of x in terms of u1 u2 etc un okay so let's observe 
uh, once again the fact that uh, this uh, B, the elements of B star is unique given B okay this B star is called the dual basis B star is okay let me write it uh, fully B star is uh, F1 etc F, F1 etc Fn B star is unique given uh, given B this is a basis of V this is a basis of V star and they are related by means of those n square formulas this B star is called uh, the dual basis of V star we have determined a basis uh, of V star in terms of a basis of V that we started with. Let us look at uh, an example. Uh, Let us look at uh, V as uh, P2 of R the real vector space of uh, all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 this has dimension 3 the dual basis V star will also have dimension 3. I will determine 3 uh, dual basis uh, vectors corresponding to the usual basis of uh, P2 1 T T square I am sorry that is not what I will do I will determine a dual basis and then try to determine what is the basis for which this dual basis is the dual in this example I will determine a basis for V star and then determine which is the basis of V for which this is the dual basis okay. So for this we need uh, this evaluation functionals so let me define uh, let us take uh, 3 numbers uh, T1, T2, T3 as uh, distinct I have 3 distinct numbers let me define 3 functionals L1 of P, L2 of P, L3 of P, Li of P is P at Ti given a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 I will uh, compute uh, the value of this polynomial at T1 that is my functional L1 of P, L2 and L3 are determined similarly I have 3 functionals here each is linear L1, L2, L3 are linear functionals on uh, V my claim is that this forms a basis of V star they form a basis of V star V star is the space of all functionals space of all linear functionals on V I mean claiming that these three functionals linear functionals form a basis of V star it is enough if I prove that these are linearly independent okay so let me prove that these are linear independent suppose that suppose that uh, the 0 functional is a linear combination of these 3 okay let us say alpha 1 uh, L1 plus alpha 2 L2 plus alpha 3 L3 I must show that alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 are 0 okay what this means is that these are functionals so what this means is that uh, the action of uh, this functional on any polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 gives a value 0 alpha 1 L1 of P plus alpha 2 L2 of P plus alpha 3 L3 of P this must be the 0 number okay this must be the 0 
number here this is 0 is a linear functional 0 functional. I will look at specific uh, choice of p 3 specific choices of p take the case uh, when p of t is 1 okay p of t is 1 constant polynomial. So what does this equation give me in that case this is 1 so alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 0 take the case uh, p of t equals t p of t equals t then what is alpha 1 of t alpha 1 of t alpha 1 l1 of t t1 do I get alpha 1 t1 plus alpha 2 t1 plus alpha 3 sorry t2 alpha 3 t3 to be 0 l1 of t is uh, t at t1 that is t1 okay I get this for the next polynomial t square I must get uh, alpha 1 t1 square alpha 2 t2 square plus alpha 3 t3 square that is 0 these are the 3 equations that must be satisfied by the numbers alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 okay I get a homogeneous system I get a homogeneous system the first row is 1 second row t1 t2 t3 t3 third row t1 square t2 square t3 square alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 okay t1 t2 t3 are distinct numbers it can be shown that this matrix is invertible you can do elementary row operations on this and reduce this to the identity matrix see this is called the so called Vandermond matrix okay if t1 t2 t3 are distinct then this matrix is invertible homogeneous system with an invertible coefficient matrix has 0 as a solution so alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 are 0 l1 l2 l3 are linear independent okay they form a basis for v star because uh, v star has dimension uh, 3 dimension of v star is 3 these form a basis I will leave uh, okay I will just I will probably answer this question what is the basis of v what are the 3 polynomials what are the 3 polynomials which form a basis of v which give you this dual basis what are the 3 polynomials which form a basis of v which for which this is the dual basis that can be determined by looking at the defining equations of the dual basis fi of uj equals delta ij the answer is uh, the so called Lagrange interpolating polynomials you will study this in numerical analysis the polynomials in v corresponding to which this is the dual basis l1 l2 l3 uh, are the Lagrange interpolating polynomials at t1 t2 t3 okay so please try to determine these 3 polynomials for which this uh, l1 l2 l3 is the dual basis so let me stop here.